Hello, everybody, and welcome to Seeds of Liberty podcast, episode 48. Uh, we're going to go with Jeremy for the BIPCOT NoGov license. Yes, as always, the Seeds of Liberty podcast is covered by the BIPCOT No Government license. This allows reuse by anyone except for governments and the agents thereof. You can find out more information about this at BIPCOT.org. So it's been a while since we've done a uh, show, just uh, the basic three. So we're gonna we're gonna do that today. Um, we're gonna discuss the recent um, Super basic. Bowl bread, bread and circus nationalism and militaristic fervor that's going on. Um, the uh, you know if you hate America, get out type of thing. So <laughs> can we also talk about the Oregon standoff? I'm pretty sure me and Jeremy uh, were both listening to it all last night and all this morning. Was was something recent happened? Yeah. Well, they were live streaming. Like they finally got everyone out. Ah, uh, I didn't know that. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't follow up with the end of it. Last I had heard, they had gotten all but the one guy out, and then he. No, was he, still, he he came out. Yeah. He he was still saying it, sitting there saying he he was refusing to come out and supposedly was acting suicidal or something. But. I mean, all he, all they'd have to do, like all the FBI, everyone, all they would have to do is just everyone just leave. <laughs> just leave. He would eventually be like. <laughs> Seriously? Yeah. All right, I'm going home. You have any food? In- <laughs> yeah. Well, I mean, I I I listen. I mean, I did. I listened to a good portion of the stream last night, and it was a lot of I yelling. Mean, yeah, there was a lot of yelling. I mean, it was crazy. Like some of the stuff, like the 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 shouting back and forth between the the four individuals in the wherever they were. I don't even know if they were in a cabin or something. Um, but there was there was I think it was two couples. Um, but like the screaming that was going on between them and the person who was supposedly leading the FBI team was like ridiculous. It was like, you know, teenagers yelling at each other. Like, I'm going to, if you don't come out right now, you know, it was like, it was like, insane. <laughs> and, uh, you know, the, unfortunately it was like, insane. it was, but I mean, like, it was so amateur. I try to, I, I, I want to feel bad for these people because they have, you know, they, they think what they're doing is right, you know. I mean, we always talk about intentions versus results here, but like, on some level, they're kind of close. Like, they see an issue, they see a problem with the government, they see overreach. Unfortunately, they just they think it's this government. They think it's it's just a current iteration of it. They don't see the problem past that. So. You know, it was it was a lot. Like I said, like I said, you listen to the the feed. It was a lot of screaming, a lot of praying, more screaming, more praying. Yeah, you it know, was cracking me more, up. You'd be like, "Hey, fuck you! Y'all ready to pray?" Yeah, it was, it was insane. <laughs> and, and, it, and it, yeah, and it was and it was wow. and it was it was all about you know, and then talking about and then screaming at the the FBI about the Constitution. And it's like you can see, it's like, oh, you guys just you just don't get it. You know, it's the same thing. Like. Right after uh, Lavoy Finicum got shot, you know, I, I said it that day. It, you know, it's unfortunate, and I feel bad that it happens. But then you see them out. That you see his friends out there still waving the flag and going, "Well, it was just this one bad guy." It's like, no, it was the state that killed your friend. <laughs> Why are you still championing them and thinking that you can make it better? You know, and it was even worse last night because they had they they finally got they were trying they were trying so desperately to, to get any politician on the line. Like that was their recourse. They were basically trying to call their representative being holed up in some cabin in the woods surrounded by FBI and local police. And they're trying to redress their grievances. Like when is when does it finally strike home to you that these tactics that you think are, well, if I just do this, everything will be okay. When does it strike home that this isn't working? Mm -hmm. This isn't going to get you anywhere. I mean, I you think know, it's when these people really have no financial incentives to go back. Uh, if you get what I'm saying, like if, if they have literally nothing to lose, then, then that's when the situation becomes a little different. But right now you hear them, ah, you know, I'm going to lose my house. I got to go back. I got to pay my bills. Somebody worrying about a revolution is not worrying about that. So, yeah. I, you know, it's, it's a little bit of that. These guys kind of just it was a stunt to see what they could do. I honestly, I think it was a it was a <clears throat> FBI psyop really on the whole country. Well, I, I don't know about all that. I mean, I, okay, 
Uh, let me couch that by saying. I mean, a few patsies went up there, and you just saw last night they were on the phone. Well, no. Uh, what I was going to say is that I, to to couch what I was going to say, it is always a possibility. There, it, it you, you to to deny the fact that anything that occurs that becomes news like this is a false could be possibly be a false flag is incredibly naive because the the government has a history of doing these things you know they, they've done it over and over and over again um now i think there's certain times that that gets preyed upon where you know the the true tinfoil hatters out there they, ju they jump on any conspiracy theory and i think that's used to the advantage of the ruling elite because they will put out certain fault they will put out certain information like that because they know certain people will jump all over it right away but oh my god false flag and they then you you know you make yourself kind of look stupid you know like you know the sandy hook thing i think was a great example of that you know so many people jumped on that right away and like they made like some like they just start making these more like they go from like okay well this could have possibly happened to well like sandy hook was proved to be a FBI exercise. I, I don't think it was proved to be. There's a guy that's, that's like headline news a while back. He filed a one trillion dollar uh, lawsuit against MSNBC, NBC, Fox, mm -hmm. and CNN for mm -hmm. deliberately trying to mislead and uh, misinform the public on Sandy Hook because there's like people that go there and go like, "Hey, where's the dead people?" And they're like, uh, "What are you talking about? <laughs> that was that was nothing. Like that was a school exercise." Well, okay, but I mean, it had crisis workers and everything. What, what what happened to that suit, Dave? What suit? I haven't read about it. Yeah, I haven't see, seen anything yeah, yet about file it. Anybody suit? I, again, there's there's nothing been proven either way. You can't make that kind of claim. Nothing's been proven either way. But the the fact the, the, I've heard the, that, I've heard it from multiple sources. Uh, uh, you do realize that's still not proof. Right? I know it. I know it's not proof. <laughs> like that's I, the I, statement I've made multiple times, and you're still attacking the statement I've made. There's no proof, Dave. No, I understand. There might be evidence. There's no proof. I understand. I was just trying to interject some all I'm All I'm saying is that there's, there's people that, you know, they, they, they jump on this stuff, and I, I think other people prey on that. So is it possible that the whole thing last night was staged? Sure, it's possible. But it, it does, I mean, if, if, they, if, it was, if it was such an event, then they played it out pretty well because the whole – the whole thing started supposedly as a as a form of demonstration because I think uh, Amund had been put into solitary confinement in the in the jail that he's in right now, and everybody was freaking out about that. So this was kind of their way of saying, "You need to let him out of solitary confinement, or we're not leaving here." Um, so you know, but again, they just they come so close, and then they're still you know they just they had to get a representative on the phone, and then they finally did. And I swore this woman, this assembly woman, what Michelle Fioro or Fieri or something, she's like she's like another she's she's another Michelle Bachman. That's all I heard from this woman, just screaming, ranting, and raving about Constitution. And we and need how, to pray. And, yeah, and then we need to pray. The federal and, government has went off the rails. Yeah, and Obama. Obama. It's, it Obama was, was basically like Michelle Bachman was on the phone. God, I didn't even think about that. That was that's hilarious. That's the first thing I thought of when I heard this woman. It's like, oh my God, it's her clone. It really sounded like my mom, to be honest, but. but. <laughs> So, you know, like I said, it, it, to me, it doesn't matter whether it was staged or not. It's in God's hands, Jeremy. It's in God's <laughs> this hands. This is true. <laughs> it's I, not I, in the FBI's hand. It's in God's hands. I, 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 think, I think the you bigger know, I, issue is... I made a meme today, and it said, I really, if, you're, if you somehow are listening to this because of the title of this or whatever, and you're a Christian and you're a patriot or whatever, I want you to go read Romans chapter 13, the whole thing. It'll blow your mind. Basically, if you claim to be a Christian at this point, you should be realizing, due to the Bible, that Obama was appointed by God and this government was appointed by God, and you should respect it because it is under God's authority. So, I mean, that's it's a big contradiction because this government's pay, paying for abortions and to drone bomb little brown kids. But, you know, you got to do what you got to do, right? You know, this this kind of reminds me of um, I don't know if you guys saw the recent Android cast uh, where he's, he he got to have this guy Kenneth something uh, where he's talking about the sovereign citizen, you know, movement about you know how the United States is a corporation, right? And your birth mm -hmm. certificate, you know, you're you're owned by the corporation of the United States and formed in 1871 and all that, and uh, and and they're basically saying like, in order to extricate yourself from the system, 
you have to say certain magic words mm -hmm. and or write certain magic yep. words and it's such a strange thing to me because it's like it's like these guys i guess they're, they're screaming constitution and i don't know bill of rights and freedom of speech and all this kind of stuff and uh and I don't know. They can just kill you. <laughs> like, what? There's no magic words that's going to save you. I don't understand. Their like, constitution people, clearly states like, that the <laughs> that the government has the right to suppress any rebellion. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Well, I don't understand why. <laughs> what are they fighting for? Everything. That, you know, I kind of got railed at uh, by Donnie for saying that everything that the government does is constitutional, but. Right. In reality, that's the truth because the Constitution is what authorizes the government. So, therefore, that's the catalyst that causes everything after that. So, n n not really that. It's human ignorance is the core belief in the state. That's the problem. But that, that Constitution is the excuse. You ask any diehard state as well, it's because the Constitution created the government. You know, America is not the only country with a constitution. Canada has one. Mexico has yeah. one. Every other country in the world pretty much has one. Yeah. But, you know, it's it's apparently they don't understand that the constitution was written to screw the non-politically co uh, connected people. It's just weird. You know, people come up with these um, magic words. I mean, I mean, I guess there is, you know, history with the, you know, Illuminati and, you know, bloodlines and royal families and going back you know millennia but in the end you know they have the guns <laughs> and you're just you and doesn't matter what you say they can knock down your door i mean <laughs> it doesn't it's not about magic words like you know to me it's more about you know talking about education and agorism and and you know self-ownership and you know you own yourself you know they have no legitimate authority because we can't delegate it right we don't have and I don't know. It, to me, it it just doesn't seem necessary to go into all that. I don't know. <laughs> well, I <Weird> mean, stuff. <laughs> well, I mean, the 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 magic words are used in a, in a bunch of different ways. But what it like when you? I mean, you mentioned the uh, you know the sovereigns or, or people who are or think that way but may not call themselves as such. Right. Um, you know, I, I know a lot. I know some of these people personally, and I I know that for some of them they continue down this path because it has had uh, it, it seemingly had positive results for some people because mm. depending on the judge depending on the jurisdiction stuff like that does work sometimes you know i i know people that have gotten their stuff thrown out of court because when they start talking these things the, when they start saying these things in a, in a public setting in like a courtroom the judge panics and shuts the whole thing down because he's not he or she is not exactly sure what is going to come out next yeah. and it's almost like okay we just need to like squash this because it's it's like all right they, they, they do a quick cost benefit analysis like do we let this proceed or and, and try to you know get them jailed for whatever it is or get the fine for whatever it is or do we just let this go and sweep it under the rug and hope it goes away and doesn't cause us any more problems but but then is, is it more about like saying magic words or just confusing the judge <laughs> confusing the people there well <laughs> see, see, oh, see, oh, well, see, well like, see is it because they're saying magic words specific words or you know but well see that that's that's where the problem comes in because <laughs> i think i i think that many judges or prosecutors or anybody would most likely be confused mm -hmm. but the reaction of saying okay just you know just let's just drop this lends credence to the thought that they are hiding something right so i think that i mean again i i wasn't there in all these situations so i i can't know for sure i wasn't inside these judges heads but just based on you know other evidence and stuff it, it would seem more likely that it was a confusion issue and it just seemed like more of a headache at the time kind of like you know if even if a cop pulls you over and you know or or you have some interaction with a cop but it ends up being like it seems like it's going to be too much trouble for them like i've i've been i've been pulled over in the past or i've been you know i've been harassed by cops in the past where it ends up they end up walking away from you and saying this is going to be too much paperwork and i don't want to deal with this bs you know, like that type of attitude. Like, I mean, my, yeah, I've this, seen my buddy get out of a ticket by calling and asking for an extension. They're like, just yeah. don't worry about even c coming in. We're going to throw the ticket out. 
No, exactly. So, like, so I, I think again, this is just my opinion. I, I think that a majority of these cases was like a headache thing. The judge was looking ahead at it and saying, "Oh, this is just going to be a nightmare. Let's just get out of this." But by doing so, it lends credence to these people that think it's the magic words that do this. Yeah. Now, if you have a judge who wholeheartedly believes in the Constitution and believes in it in the manner that we were all indoctrinated to think that it actually operates. Not case law. Yeah, then I, then I could see in those instances a judge saying, well, heck, he's kind of got us there, and, and then saying we need to drop this and just let's move on. Um, but, you know, like I said, that, that's where it becomes a crapshoot because it depends where you go. I mean, I've had other situ I know other people that have gotten into situations with the same exact arguments, the same exact defense that somebody else was successful with in another jurisdiction. And the judge just basically laughs them off and is like, yeah, you're a crazy person, uh, guilty as charged, whatever. <laughs> you know, so like yeah. it, it really, like you said, it doesn't, it really doesn't matter because it, they can, the agents of the state can do whatever they want whenever they want. And they can write the rules later to make it legal what they did. That's I don't know who time and time again, you know. So, sorry, go ahead. Yeah, Dave. if one gets past them, they'll they'll amend the law to where that'll never happen again. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. No. No. I think I heard it the first the first time. I think it was Bill Buper. Sorry if I'm putting words in Bill Buper's mouth, but how I'm, dare you? I'm pretty sure he said that like the sovereign citizen movement is like the most insane form of statism. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, because it still lends legitimacy to the system, right? Mm -hmm. They're saying it is legitimate. We just have to find these loopholes that are legitimate and exempt us our, ourselves, <laughs> right? Mm -hmm. Absol so, well, absolutely. They're still playing into the system. I, 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 I've, said as, I've said as much to a couple of people that I know that are in that, you know, that are either consider themselves sovereigns or follow a lot of the same paths because I, I mean I went down that path for a while when I met these people originally I went up before I you know before I was an, an anarchist when I was still a, a constitutionalist I went down this path because I I found all the things wrong like I had gotten as far back as the war between the states and I saw the issues there and I realized what I had not been taught and the, and the, and the way that it had been mischaracterized and what we had all been falsely led to believe but I stopped there and I was still stuck at that point. Well, oh, well, we just need to get back to before that point. We Why do you think back. you stopped there? Because you thought you had it figured out? Yeah. No, no, absolutely. Yeah. I, I came to that point. And said, no, oh, no, I was at that point as well. I was like, yeah. well, man, if we could just get back to the Constitution before they put the income tax in, then I would probably be like, okay, this would be, I could tolerate this because, God, you know, there's a famous quote, I, there's, Government can write any law it wants, and I'll obey it or disobey it. it depends on if I'm willing to tolerate the re, re <clears throat> the repercussions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, well, like I said, I, I went even further back. You know, at first I went to the income tax, and then I went further back than that, and I went back to the war, and I was and I was still. So I went down that path, and I, I checked into a lot of these different avenues, and there's a bunch of different groups. They all call themselves something different. They all have slightly divergent paths. But they all start from the same premise, that the Constitution is valid, and it was written in a way that has just been perverted. That's all it is, that if we can just get back to the way of the quote-unquote intended purpose, everything will be fine. And they wholeheartedly believe this, and that's where they all start. That's the, start, that's the premise they all start from. And then they slightly diverge, like there's a, the National something or other alliance, I forget the name of it, but it's all these things, and it's all it's all it is. It, what it boils down to is just different variations of magic words that you can tell in different places, you know. And like I said, I know people that have been successful, so I understand why certain people keep doing this. You know, I have, I, have a, I know a guy out in California who's been frustrating the heck out of the out of the cops out there for years. Mm -hmm. You know, at one mm -hmm. point he almost had his the entire department of his town shut down. Because he went through the, the magic words and found out that none of them had an oath of office on record, which supposedly, at least according to the, at least according to the California Constitution, um, every you know every public official or whatever that has to that has to swear an oath of office is supposed to have a written version of that on file at the county recorder's office. And he went down and found out that most of them didn't, and he called them on it, and he almost had the whole thing shut down. <laughs> but again, that's because. 
he had people there that were like panicked and were like, oh my God, we got to do something. So let's just, let's shut this guy up so nothing else goes wrong, you know? <laughs> but then a couple of years later, they turned around, there's some new people and they're like, well, screw it. We're going to start harassing this guy again. So, you know, but on the, on the flip side of that, I am going to start using some of his tactics when they finally pull my uh, permission slip to drive away from me, um, which, I mean, technically they were supposed to do multiple times already, but whatever, that's another story. Um, you know, <laughs> I haven't just, renewed mine, and I don't know if I will. Oh, I, I wasn't going to renew it once, it, my, but mine, because they do it for like 10 to 12 years at a time now, so mine doesn't actually expire until 2019. See, my, they don't um, do that here. Mine's yeah, like every, York, every York, twice it, a year, I think. No, in, in New York, it renewed, their license gets renewed every 10 years, or tw it might even be 12 years now. Um, but, uh, I mean, you still have to, you still, you're still supposed to pay your registration fees every year. Um, but the license is only every 12 years. No, no, I'm talking about the tag. Oh, the license plate. Yeah. Oh, yeah, no, that's every two years. I was talking about the license itself. When the light, I was talking about my license expiring, not my license. Oh. Plate. My, registra my registration set to expire, I think, in June this year. And I'm probably not going to renew it. I won't be able. Actually, technically, I won't be able to renew it because when they they won't send it to me because they'll tell me that my license is suspended and I have to pay to have it unsuspended before they'll send it to my place. <laughs> but you know, again, there's people that I know. There's there's actually a website, and I'll, I'll try to find it, put it in the show notes. Um, but there was somebody who had actually come up with a template for a, a homemade license plate <laughs> that you can make and laminate and put on your car that basically says. Um, you're not a commercial vehicle because when it comes to that route the other um, common belief is that when license when the licenses were originally created the term driver only specifically referred to somebody who was transporting other human beings for payment mm -hmm. so cab drivers limo drivers you know stuff like that Bus that makes drivers. that makes a modicum of sense. No, it does. It does, and it actually, if you follow if you follow the the legal language in most of the states over time, that was the case. Like here in New York, they actually had to finally amend that at one point because people had been using that as a defense. Well, I don't need a license because I'm not a driver. Um, you know, I'm just I'm. Tr it's it's the difference of in, in their in their in their eyes, it's the difference between driving and traveling. You have a, you know, a, a, an alleged natural right to travel, so you should be able to go wherever you wish, you know, as long as you're not infringing on, pub, you know, private property anywhere. Um, and just because you're in a vehicle now should not change that. Mm -hmm. um, so again, I, I even though I don't necessarily, well, I shouldn't say necessarily, even though I don't believe the Constitution is valid in, in any way, um, because you are kind of forced to play the game in certain situations you know like if you are dragged into court for any reason you really don't have a choice you have to find a way to try to play the game to your advantage um i'm gonna pull out all these stops i'm gonna pull out every one of these things and i'm gonna see not not because i expect any of them to work but i want to be able to throw every possible defense up there try to get it recorded you know so i have documentation of this and then be able to show up people and see like look all your magic words don't mean a gosh darn thing. <laughs> Even though, according to, if we if we believe the intent that you think is there, even though I should have been right with everything I said, mm -hmm. I was still basically told to go f myself and go sit in the cage, go sit in the, in the corner in a cage for a while, Jeremy. You know, so like, and again, so I, I have no intention of winning. I'm trying to prove a point here. You know, so I mean. I, have I like uh, what uh, Mark Stevenson's. Uh, Mark Stevens, yeah. I like Mark Stevens saying, "Can you prove that a <laughs> constitutional yeah. law applies to me just because I'm physically in this location?" <laughs> it's <Right>. great. <laughs> well, that that's part of their thing right. too, though. That's that's part of a lot of the the sovereigns or 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 people of that nature. That that's basically their argument too. Like you you have to prove because again, actually, the burden of proof is supposed to be on the state in all situations. When you're dragged into a court of law, the burden of proof is supposed to be on them. That's kind of the point. That's that's the way we're told the system is supposed to work. Unfortunately, especially when it comes to traffic law, especially when it comes to traffic law here in New York, is Stan, they try to put people on the defensive and try to make you be the one that has to prove your innocence versus them having to prove your guilt. 
and most people just roll over and accept this. That's why Nassau County, I, I never under, I mean, well, I shouldn't say never because the embezzlement just run, runs wild over here. But they like the, the, the county is supposedly always hurting for money, but they rake in. They, they rape people for so much money for ridiculous traffic violations here. And, be, and they do it because a lot of the cops will give you um, like multiple tickets. Like, the, I, I mean, I've actually on, on more than one occasion, I have received a ticket for having a broken um, license plate light. Not a tail light, <laughs> oh, not a headlight. Nice. <laughs> the lights that shine on my license plate. I have gotten a ticket on multiple occasions for having one of those out when wow. every time I had a vehicle that had two of them. So it was still mostly illuminated. And just because the cop wanted to be an a-hole, and he wanted to write me more than one ticket. They write petty tickets like that, so that gives them an excuse to pull people over, so they can further investigate them. Well, well, yeah, well, yeah. Normally, yes, but in the uh, here in Nassau County, that's not necessarily the case. What they do is they want to give you as many tickets as possible, so that you feel that you're in a position that, oh my God, I can't, I can't afford all this money because who can? Like seatbelt tickets are over two hundred dollars now for a seatbelt. It's insane. But what they do is they nail you with all these tickets so that when you actually do show up to court to beg for mercy, they want you to do that. They want people to come in and plea with them because that's what they do. They'll, they'll go, oh, yeah, we'll knock all these points off your license. Just, you know, we'll knock it down to a, uh, you know, you could have you could have like a, a speeding ticket. You could you could you could, you could have a speeding ticket and blow a stop sign during the same event and a red light like you could literally go on a, like a mini um <laughs> high speed chase because i've done this before actually i got pulled over one time because i decided I, I when i back when i had my little volkswagen gti 20th anniversary that was a quick little car i decided i wanted to be an a-hole one day and, and mess with the cops who tried to pull me over <laughs> so i dropped into it i dropped into a neighborhood that a residential neighborhood that i knew really well and started whipping around turns and i lost them for a good while and then when i finally pulled over like nice. there were five of them they surrounded me with guns wow so that. yeah, <laughs> six, I I walked away with six tickets from that Woo. one incident. And no bullet holes, right? Nope. But nice, when nice. I went into court, they <laughs> were willing to waive pretty much everything wow. and knock them down. Like you know, oh, we'll knock the speeding one down to a seatbelt one, but they still keep the fines the same. Mm -hmm. So that's all they care about. It's not about safety. Because supposedly here in New York, there's there's an, a certain amount of points you can get on your license before it will be taken away from you. So it goes everywhere. It's twenty two. Well, yeah, but I went out and did all these these supposedly dangerous things and put the public at risk that I assessed all these points in one incident. But they were willing to wipe away all but two of them, just as long as they got their money. So it's all a scam. It's all ridiculous. It's all bullshit. Yeah, if it wasn't a scam, it would have been, no, we're pulling your license because, you know, apparently you can't follow the fucking rules. Oh, exactly. I, I would have been in the back of I would have been in the back of the cop car that day if it wasn't a scam. My, yeah, car, exactly. my car would have been left on the side of the road and I would have been launched into the back of that car without a second thought. Yeah, you're endangering the peace. Mm -hmm. we, we, we can't let you out here driving like that. Sorry, we got to take you in. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But, like, if, if the law really mattered. So, but no, it doesn't. It's like, well, I can fuck off and pay pay the fine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's that's yeah. that's really it, what it, it is. Pisses me off. Yeah. So, <clears throat> it's so. But like I said, that's when you, when you have these type of systems, you you you, you can kind of see where where people would want would think there's ways to make it work for them or to use these magic words and, and get out of stuff. It's just desperation is all it is, man. I, I mean, I understand it. Like, I I totally understand it. Like, you know the the the. <laughs> you're when you're when, when all you can do is grasp for straws you're gonna grasp for straws yeah well i see it's funny because um I, I think we were we were actually talking about this earlier today in another chat um and i i said something to the effect of the fact that it's there's a there's an underlying fear with a lot of these people and I, I think it's it's not necessarily being afraid of the state per se but it's more of a fear of being wrong. And I think that's where a lot of these people who 
get to a point say like say like these ranchers in Oregon where like like I said earlier where it seems like they're kind of close like they're almost seeing the problem he was saying some stuff the other night he was like you know I'm a Christian or last night he was like I'm a Christian man I am sick of paying for abortions why can I not opt out well that, that exactly that's what and I'm, I'm just like well, all right now carry that to its logical conclusion well yeah that's what I'm saying so I, I think a lot of these folks <laughs> I don't want to pay for your fucking military <laughs> A, a lot of these folks are close, but the the fear of it, it's one thing to start to realize that there's stuff going wrong. There's there, it's one thing to start to say, oh crap, like the government's doing this thing that's really bad and it's really affecting me or it's really affecting my friends or it's really affecting other people I know. It's a whole nother level to look at it and go, crap, everything they're doing is hurting us. Everything they're doing is is attacking me and my friends. So like. I, I, I really see it in, in a lot of these so-called patriots that come really close and say things like Dave was saying, like this guy said last night, where they start to make these realizations, but it's like this fear that sets in because it's – they all that would have to do is like just take the next logical step, but instead it's like, oh, wait a minute. If I take the next step forward, then I really have to consider that my entire life has been a lie. I really <laughs> yeah. need to consider <clears throat> – Exactly, and that scares the ever living piss out of people. I mean, I know it scared the crap out of me. That's why. That's why. Uh, it didn't really scare me that, because I'm a person who strives to be right in every scenario. So, so <laughs> I wasn't right in a in, about something. Like the first time I like uh, was confronted with volu volunteerism, I was like, "Well, this this could be right, and I could be wrong. I need to read Damn more it. into Damn this." <laughs> I've yeah. always been like that, man. I've always been the one that, like, could, like, in the middle of doing something, I'm, I'll, I'll be the one that puts my brakes on and goes, "Am I taking the wrong approach? Like, am, is this the wrong way to handle this?" And Danilo, I don't think a lot of people do that. I think they just hammer down. They just say, "You know what? I've dug in." <laughs> there's a uh, the, there, there's a great episode of It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia, uh, where uh, they're debating evolution, and. Uh, one of the pro evolution guy goes, uh, his name is Mac on the show. He goes, Look, I'm an American. I'm not going to change my mind on this. I'm too dug in. And I think there's so many people out there that are just too, they feel that they're too dug in. It's like a, it's like a, a backslidden Christian. This is like, Oh, uh, you know, <laughs> I can't never show my face around church. I've been whoring around too much. <laughs> you know, it's, look, just all you have to do is admit some things. People aren't property. They shouldn't be. No one has a right to anyone else's labor, even for your fucking military. No one. So, so, uh, so I was thinking about the idea that you know most volunteers and anarchists say that politicians are sociopaths, right? Um, and I was thinking about a possible status rebuttal to that, which would be stop generalizing, right? You can't say like like just because you had a bad relationship, you can't say all guys are evil. Right. And so and so I was thinking, like, why is that? Why is that, you know, a, a faulty rebuttal? Because it's not about the individual. It's really about the nature of government. <laughs> right. Doesn't matter who goes into government. The nature is always the same. Right. It is a monopoly on violence. Right. It's yeah. Initiation if, of force. If they do their job. They're going to be a bad person. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. So, so even the most kind-hearted politician will do harm, irreparable harm, on many, many people. That you know, the law of unintended consequences. So, <clears throat> regardless of the intentions of the uh, of the ruler, there will be deleterious effects. So, that, I love yeah. that word. No, no I love uh, that word. <laughs> yeah, I know you do, Dave. Um, well, see, see, it's funny. Now that you say that, though, that Danilo, I, I guess actually, the. The, the statish rebuttal there actually would be correct though because they're not yeah I, I mean I agree with you that it's the nature of government but then it's, it's, it is kind of wrong to say that all politicians are sociopaths because right. they're not necessarily so I mean there definitely are there'd be I mean everyone sociopaths. everyone saw what happened to Frodo after he kept wearing the ring right I, I, get, I get no no I, I get, like, like everyone saw that right like I, it wasn't just me no. <laughs> like he snapped when Frodo rolled, as Bilbo much, snapped as, on Frodo. As much as I love J.R.R. Tolkien, that's fiction, Dave. Okay. Um, but, but no, well, no. Fiction I'm doesn't not, exist. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. 
<laughs> I'm not saying that there aren't sociopaths in office because there most definitely are. The ones that do the most overt harm from the get-go are obvious. The ones that stay in office for an extended period of time are obvious because once you stay there long enough, you cannot not be unhinged in some way to be able to continue to do the things that you know you're doing day in and day out. Look at you, Senator But McCain. the the you know the average politician, you know, like the hometown person who just gets talked up by their friends and their and their community, and then they go run to office to make something better, like. Those people, I don't believe they're sociopaths. Those are the people that really want to do good. Now, if they stay in office long enough, it may wear on them and it may start to change them. And if they want to continue to stay, they may start to pick up sociopathic tendencies because you kind of have to to be able to, to remain numb to a lot of this stuff that you have to cut. Even the ones that are out there claiming they're trying to do the right thing, it's like, oh, I got to hold my nose and vote for this thing to help this guy out so I can get help later on in the thing I want. Like, that's not good. That's, that's, that's selling your principles, you know? So, that, so, yes, that starts to lead to sociopathic behavior. But to say that, to, like I said, the, the, that rebuttal saying you can't generalize, well, technically they're right because you can't generalize them all as sociopaths. Right. But, but, but yeah, then, then, it, then it leads me to believe that why do people, why are people attracted to positions of power? And it reminds me of a Charlie Chaplin quote I like, which is, um, you know, um, all good things can be done with love and only, you know, things that are evil are done with power. Right, you need power to do evil things, <laughs> and uh, and and so yeah. So so why do some people? Why are some people attracted to positions of power, and some people are not? And some people don't want to control, you know, their fellow man, and so the, it, it speaks to a certain type of personality that is attracted to that, and which is why you know you know you say you know we don't yeah right you can't say all all are sociopaths, but it attracts a certain type of personality, and uh, I. And that's, no, I, I agree to 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 yeah. an extent. I because because yeah. again, yes, the people that start out as, so, as sociopaths absolutely will be attracted to it. Absolutely, because right. that's what they do. They they so most sociopaths are take take the you know rational self interest to the umpteenth level. You know, yeah. everything is about their self interest. It doesn't matter what it doesn't matter what happens to anybody else in the process. As long as they're still coming out on top, that's all that matters. So people like that will absolutely be drawn to power. Because what better position can you put yourself in to do the things that you want and not care about what happens to everybody else than to be a politician where you get to play God with other people's lives and money on a daily basis? Like where, yeah. where else are you gonna kind of get that? You know, yeah. So, no, but just like, like a like, gerrymandered yeah. senator, like what? yeah. But that's what I'm saying. Like, where, where else? Where else are you gonna get that kind of goods? You know. So of course they're gonna be attracted. But again, you get lucky and be born into it. Well, yeah, but but then but then there's also the, all those other people that really start out with the good intentions, and and you see it all the time. The ones that are very short lived for the job, figured out very quickly that it's just they can't stomach it. Unfortunately, not enough of them stand up and, and say anything about it after the fact. They kind of just like slink back into obscurity and say, well, the system's screwed and there's nothing I could do about it because I tried. Um, that's where, see, that's, see that's, uh, this is something I thought about before. Th that's a point where I wish, if, if for anybody who's going to stay in the, in the, in the statist paradigm and, and, you know, the minarchist, libertarian, you know, the big L libertarians, anybody who thinks that there's still some hope for the system, like that's one area of whistleblowers I would think that more people would, would, would be clamoring to see more of is politicians that got in and got out in a hurry and, were, and, and why they got out. Mm -hmm. You know, like, it, you know, that that'd be an interesting case study to, you know, because you, you hear about, you know, I mean, obviously people like Snowden and. and, and oh, Brent. yeah. If Rand just dropped out and said and wrote a book called What in the World's Happening in Washington. But it would, it would be, be a him. it would blow out. It yeah, would be but a it, blowout. Would, it wouldn't be somebody like him. I'm talking of it. Something like that would have to come from like state representatives, somebody who is not very well known because um, somebody like Rand. I think still has aspirations beyond where he is right now, so he would never do that. Um, of you course. know, I think uh, actually the the one the one thing that might prove that 
that Trump isn't the uh, the Democratic troll that a lot of people think he is is if that he if he doesn't get the nomination and he decides to write a book after this about what happened. Like that would be great. I don't think it'll happen, but that would be great. Uh, supposedly, he, it's a bona fide lock. He's got the nomination. I, I, I he already I, signed like the pledge that like legally binds him oh, and I, everything. I, I don't. I, I have now whether he just like sandbags the race is one thing because if they get him into a head and head with Clint, uh, Clinton and he just goes. Oh yeah, well Clinton will make a good president, you know. You know. <laughs> yeah, like McCain when Obama was running, you know, like they, during the debates, you know, McCain's walking up, you know, if I wasn't voting for myself, I'd vote for Obama. It's like, are you kidding me? Hmm. What? Who would say that? Well, you, know, you know, the the other thing I was thinking about is, um, you know, how we were talking with Jeffrey Tucker about, and he and he was saying that, you know, I, I wrote all these articles and I did all these these interviews and podcasts. And I, I, I don't know how government works. <laughs> it's like, I, like what, did the, what does the day in the president of the United States look like? And, and what, what I just thought of is, you know, how all of these veterans that, uh, you know, go overseas and do all these horrible things, um, they, you know, all of them basically have come back with PTSD and a lot of them commit suicide. Yet that's a small scale of what a politician basically is responsible for. So you would think that politicians you know, at least at the same rate, get PTSD, but perhaps maybe because I guess they're so disconnected from the actual, you know, violence and, and gore that they inflict that, or, or, or maybe it's their sociopathic tendencies that they can, they can, they can isolate themselves from That's their for the greater good, Danilo. <laughs> right, right, right. And, it, and it's just, it's just amazing. Like, how do these people sleep at night? You know, you give an order to bomb, you know, a village and then you go it's to okay. sleep. It's okay. Authorities like, said that, it was okay. Authority said it was okay, Danilo. I, it's just oh, well. How does it happen? Well, again, there, there's, there's, there's a certain percentage of them that are, are sociopaths. So for them, it's plenty right. easy. Right. Um, and I, I, I'm willing to bet that there's a, a good portion of them that honestly believe, um, that they're, they're doing the best for their fellow man. Mm -hmm. Um, so. And because, like you said, they're they're physically disconnected from it. It's not. It's easier to detach yourself from it and say, "Oh yeah," like Dave. You know, Dave made the joke, but that's that's what they think. Well, we're doing this for the greater good. We're doing this for the country. This is what's good for the country. This is what's good for everybody. So, so yes, it's a terrible thing, but you know, we have to. There's plenty of other of them that I'm sure just put their faith in whatever god they 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 subscribe to. Um, you know, like all the ones that come out and say we did this for God or I prayed to God before like so like they they justify it mm -hmm. now I think at least just based on the Like the photographing the photographic evidence of president of just the presidents mm -hmm. if anybody does end up with some kind of PTSD it would seem likely that it would well, not only would it seem likely but it would seem the case that it would that it is them because i mean you look at the the aging that goes on on these guys after they've been in office especially the <laughs> ones who stay for two terms like they right. age 20 years in those eight years easy mm. you know like yeah clinton looked like skeletor when yeah he was <laughs> they, but they all do Be and why because you're you know i mean we were talking you about never it get week. to sleep <laughs> well See, here's the thing. I, I think they do get to sleep. So does this mean I have to kind of give, like, someone who was in charge for, like, 40 years, like, Gaddafi? you got to give him props for holding it together for that long? I don't know if you got to give him props, but it's just, you know. Well, no, because actually, no, because anybody who could do serious damage for that type of that type of uh, time is most likely a social, sociopath, so it, it wouldn't affect them in the first place. But the ones that look harrowed, probably are not complete sociopaths and it's it wears on them mm. you know it, it has to you you ha you'd have to be a complete sociopath or a psychopath for it not to mm -hmm. so i i think it, it it does affect them but again you're you're given all this money you're given all this prestige you're given a promise of basically being set for the rest of your life as long as you play ball so what do you do do you, do you, you know, do you, do you try to t say something about it or you just keep playing ball because it's just the easier thing to do and you just let it take its toll on you, you know? Because, again, just, you know, like I said, we were talking earlier about, you know, the conspiracy theories and stuff. 
whether any of these things are true or whether what they're up to is by design or happenstance or whatever, still end up in the same place. That's what we need to deal with because the root, the we end up in the same place, and the root is still the same. So whatever happens in the middle, I don't really give a shit about it anymore. <laughs> it's irrelevant because we, we we have the beginning and the end that's still the same in, in any case. So that's what we have to attack. You know, we have to attack the be- we have to attack the beginning to take care of everything else. So. So, so we were going to talk about the Super Bowl and the blatant, <laughs> yeah. We should, we should probably touch on that a little. And, bit. and the blatant and the blatant <laughs> propaganda going on in it. You know, uh, I didn't really watch the Super Bowl this year. I uh, glanced at it a few times. Uh, what did, what did you you guys? Uh, there was a few articles you wanted to go over. Yeah, I, well, I I had wanted to talk about it because I I didn't watch it either. This was actually probably the first year, maybe. Gosh, since I started watching, that I didn't watch. I didn't even turn the TV on at all. I, I just had no interest whatsoever. But the from the time the game ended until you know, pretty much the end of the next day, my news feeds were all flooded with different stories about the Super Bowl and you know, obviously you know, like the normal um, the halftime show and the commercials and uh, you know, there's a lot of a lot of uproar about supposedly I guess about Beyonce and her Black Power demonstration. Um, Who cares? <laughs> That yeah, well, that was that was that was my response to that. But then I started looking, I started seeing more stuff, and it was the military and police presence that really caught my eye. So I started looking into it. I found a bunch of different articles about it, and uh, it really like it. It takes this national. They they really use these opportunities to pump nationalism down everybody's throat, um, and it it just it's getting worse and worse. I mean, last year there was the story that came out that uh, I think it was that it was five million. No, yeah. See, originally I found that, but then I found a couple other that said it was actually well. I think it was combined between the NBA and the NFL. It was like six point eight billion. Ooh. Um, no, wait, hold on. I actually I have the story here. Oh, I can't look it up right now. Um, but uh, but to different teams, th- this money was spent. Um, you know, taxpayer money was given to NFL and NBA teams so they would do military tributes. Before, oh, for sure. Yeah, before games. That's how that's how many people stuff. don't like the government right now. They're having to force that shit down people's throats. But yeah, we'll see. But that's what. I'm saying. So that that was that was last year. So that's kind of it. That's kind of it. No, I mean it's been going on for a while. But that story finally broke. I think I think it was almost a year ago now. Um, and that so now more and more people were becoming aware of that. But this year, like at the Super Bowl, they just I mean, obviously, they normally have security. And ever since the, the supposed war on terror, um, there's there's been additional security at all the major sporting events, because that's supposedly where the biggest threat, you know, the biggest terrorist threat, which, of course, nothing with the exception of the Boston bombing, uh, the Boston, the Boston uh, marathon bombing. Which, as unfortunate as it was, and it's, you know, for the people that did lose their lot, you know. For it was a false flag, Jeremy. Yeah. It was a All false right. flag, the whole thing. So, sorry, Alex, I forgot. Or is that Jesse? I can't remember. That's Jesse. No, that, that's, 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 Al- that's Alex. Oh, yes, yeah, I couldn't. Yeah, see, exactly. Well, that's, yeah. <laughs> All right. Wow. You know, uh, you know, uh, on Prison Planet, we. uh oh, fuck, <laughs> your shoulder. But. If it was, check it out, you know. But anyway, as, as tragic as that one incident was. It was only it was only a few it was only what under a dozen people altogether or something like that so yeah it and it was, was national news nonstop all day every yeah, day yeah but like so a so it was it's, like, it's, okay, it's three it's people got hurt yeah well it's unfortunate there was a, there was a car wreck in Los Angeles and more people died <laughs> yeah so but so that's the only event that's ever that's been taken that's been a, that's been attacked at all and they still you know constantly oh it's, it's, that's always the threat that's always the threat. But this year, they just, like, ramped it up. Like, there was military, you know, there was MRAPs outside the building. There was um, people in military gear patrolling the inside of the stadium. There could have been a Bruce Willis-type world save scenario that went on that we don't even know about, though, Jeremy. Oh, no, that's no. What, that's what you forget about, okay? Oh, oh, no, we'd know about it. It'd be front page news when it happened. I mean, oh, yeah, you're right. They'd be ready to pat on their back. Let's say, look how, look, how, look, how, look how happy they are to trot out the stories of the terrorists they caught that you later find out <laughs> they set up in the first place. 
Oh. They want that stuff to be on the news. So if it so if, if it didn't make news, chances are they didn't catch anybody. But there was got you know there was Army Rangers patrolling the patrolling the stadium. Um, the Blue Angels that do the the the, the planes that do the flyovers uh, normally before the you know they do the little the, the, the little aerobatic things in the air, whatever the hell they do. Um, they they go out there and they put their chemtrails is what they do. <laughs> yes, right, right over the Super Bowl. <laughs> So they 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 normally do that, but this year they hung around the after. Blue the Angels is putting chemtrails everywhere. <laughs> All right, we're not gonna we're not gonna go down that rabbit hole tonight. But the uh, so this I'm this sorry, night they hung around for the whole show to, to for the whole for the whole game to patrol the skies. Um, you know the they're just whipping around the top of it, just patrolling. Yeah, yeah, just circling around the stadium. <gasps> um, okay. Which uh, how how I mean how, how expensive is is uh, right. plane fuel? I mean, <laughs> right, right, right. I mean it was yeah. Peyton Manning's yeah. last game. They had to go all out, dude. Um, the uh, the nat what was it the the the. Either the National Guard chorus or the National chorus or the Army chorus or whatever it was sang "America the Beautiful" before Lady Gaga came out and sang the national anthem, um, oh, and man. it just it just I was watching it with a bunch of people non and like stop. everyone runs to the TV when the national anthem cracks off. They take their hats off and they're just sitting there. And it's like, oh, uh, I'm, just like <laughs> I'm in the kitchen well, eating food. I'm like, whatever. Dog. It's they're Pavlov's dog. That's all it is. It's just a response. It's just a conditioned response. You hear that tune? Oh, doesn't matter where we are. Whip off my hat. Put my hand over my heart. I mean, Jesus, one of the biggest controversies the day after was somebody managed to snap a picture of Cam Newton during the national anthem. And instead of standing there with his hand over his heart, it looked like he was like looking down like this. But it's still like there was a video apparently, and it still looked like he was mouthing the words to it, or maybe even saying the words to it. But people were like so offended that, but that's what it is. Like they pump all this stuff, and they take these events. Step I mean, the in line, conformity is a must. Well, of course, but I mean, the Super Bowl is, as far as I know, is still the most watched event every year, right? It, yeah, unless maybe right. one, unless maybe one of the NASCAR events, maybe I don't know. But it's still like in the, it's definitely got to be the top three of the right. most watched events every year. Mm -hmm. So Unless like, there's like some porn video we don't know about. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> national <laughs> national TV. Let's put let let's, let me put that caveat on it. I'm pretty sure we don't have to worry about that. How many people saw Gangnam Style on TV? Uh, all right. <laughs> I, no, I'm I'm sorry. I'm just trying to be funny. Trying. All right. Uh, but anyway, uh, <laughs> it makes Danilo laugh. So obviously, I'm sorry. I'm so, I'm easy. I'm easy. That's, right. <laughs> That's why I picked him to do the show. I need easy laughers, okay? Easy. Dave, Dave, Dave didn't, Dave didn't want a host. He wanted a laugh track. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> Danilo, what's your thoughts on this whole nationalism thing with the, the Super Bowl? That. I mean, I, we understand that it's a national football league. We're not stupid. But, like, the overt, like, brainwash, the, it's propaganda, the whole thing. Yeah, yeah, I did not watch it. I think I, I, uh, I heard, I heard a little bit of the beginning of the national anthem, and uh, and I walked out. And uh, I don't know. I've never been a sports guy. Um, I mean, I, I play sports. That's about it. I don't watch sports, uh, so I never really had a history of watching this. But um, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's really amazing how as the uh, empire crumbles, and it is crumbling. The more, the more lands we invade, the more uh, territories we occupy. Um, you know, they're stretching themselves thin, and and it is crumbling, and 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 you're right, Dave. I think that um, one sign of that is the uh, intensity of the nationalism that they're, you know, layering upon layer upon layer. It's like it's necessary that <clears throat> it's necessary to reinforce it, right? When when people become disillusioned with the whole facade. So uh, I think it's I think it's good. Um, I watched. You know, Donald Trump say we're going to keep Common Core in a pro in a you know one of his little events. The crowd cheers. <laughs> Think about that. They're just believing anything he says at this point. Right. He's like, yeah, yeah. we're going to fix America. We're going to keep Common Core. He slipped it in, and like everybody was like, yeah, we're going to kill the Muslims. Right. Uh, right. It's just it, it brainwashing, man. It's to the level where it's like, oh, it's, it's out of control, man. You, you, you're right. Of, but I think it was uh, was it was it Red China that video where they were um, they're you know marching their tanks through the streets and the guy was, you know steps in front with his with his bags was that yeah. Red, Chi yeah, Red China yeah Tiananmen, Tiananmen, Tiananmen Square yeah Red China yeah yeah it's like so stuff like that like you know that if they have to do that to garner support for the state you know that there's a lot of people that are questioning 
and that are skeptical, like, wait a minute, you know, <laughs> you know, they, they have to impress the people with their military might, right? It's, it's, so, so, uh, a, a, someone who believes in the state who is very close to me said to me the other day, I'm paying this much in taxes. If they ask for one dime more, I will not pay my taxes. Yeah, that's, that's a good question I like to ask people is, you know, if you support paying taxes, so when would you not support paying tax? At what point would you not support? And uh, it's, it's interesting, you know, it's like, you know, I say, what, so right now, like 40% of your income, probably more, you know, uh, with other taxes, but, you know, 50% of your income, would you, would you pay? 60%. When would you, when would you consider resisting? When is significant for you? Zero. <laughs> it's a difficult, it, they, they don't have a clear answer for that because there's no principle there. There's no principle. Well, you have to admit you're a slave. Right. And a lot of people don't want to admit that they're a slave. It's They make every feel-based excuse in the world for all their shitty arguments. And all it is is they don't want to admit that they're a slave. And that's it. Well, and it, it blows my mind. Well, the, I don't know why it would blow your mind. I mean, we were talking about it earlier. It's a fear. It's, it's, it's a scary place to be in, man. You know, like I said, I, I still remember when I went through it. You know, you get to that point where it's like, crap. Has it really all been wrong? Like, have I been wrong about all this? Was I really, you know, and then, you know, you go through the natural stages of like anger and denial and all that stuff. And it's, it's, it, 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 it's rough, you know? So like, I understand why people cling to it. Um, it's just, I, I don't know. They, I, I think more and more people are starting to get there. Um, it's just, you know, like you said, they're they're gonna they're gonna keep you know Dino was saying they're gonna keep ramping the propaganda up. They have to. That's 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 how it works. You know that that's how you keep the facade going for as long as you do. That's all it is. It's just a, it's just an odd situation. They're just keeping the, you know, the man still hiding behind the curtain, even though it's being pulled further and further back. But they're just gonna keep spinning and spinning and spinning until the wheels finally fall off. Because what else can they do? You know, it's 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 the same thing as. The, it's it's a similar thing to the the statists that are fighting to hold on to whatever they have left and 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 not and just simply ignoring the truth just because the the fear thing they're they've doubled down well the state's doing the same thing it's not like they can it can reverse itself at this point the only thing you can do is double down and keep pushing forward and get well, once you have a keynesian economic can. model set up the only keynesian economic says double down well, well exactly. if you've ever been to the casino when someone loses real big and they go well, shit! I'm already out a thousand dollars. Let me give it back in for two thousand. <laughs> I got to make it up. That's what Keynesianism is, and uh, that's why those people go broke. Well, it's, um, it's, it's beyond doubling down. These guys are sitting at a twenty right now, and they're 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 hitting. <laughs> yeah, they're hitting. <laughs> they're hitting. They're hitting on a twenty over and over and over again. Yeah, and they printed the money to play We're at the casino. Get that ace one of these days. <laughs> So, right. yeah. Right. Uh, yeah. So this whole nationalism thing on, on, on with with, the, with sports really is insane to me. I, I I don't know why it's not more free market. Well, but you it, notice like the government gives like the M NFL tax free status. Like well, that's ridiculous. Sure, sure, yeah. yeah, but so, but, so what, why wouldn't they? But what what is what is the modern what is modern sports? Other than bread and circuses, it, it, that's all it is. Is bread and circuses. So that, that, that why 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 should you be so surprised? That's I mean, all it is. A, there's a reason why the most popular players get into the big games. <laughs> well, and, well, yeah, but and the, there's, the, I don't know. It, uh, on the on the flip side, that's the same reason that I kind of stopped watching them altogether once I became an anarchist because I was a huge sports fan. You know, I grew up a diehard. I've all but quit watching them. I still I still catch a, an Alabama game from here. You know, here there. Yeah, you know, a basketball know. game here and there, but I just, man, it just the, the nationalism is out of control on those things. Well, of course, like again, though, that's you know that's what they're there for at this point, you know, and uh, it's a, it's a wonderful opportunity because there's still so many people out there that are either just diehard sports fans to begin with, or use sporting events like that the same way they use like comedy shows or anything else, just as a release, just to get away from the horribleness that is you know, life in the USSA on a regular basis where you're, you know, having problems paying the bills because the economy sucks because the government screws everything up, whether you realize what the actual problem is or not. Like most people are downtrodden on a regular basis because mm -hmm. of the effects of the state. I've never seen more distracted, downtrodden people in my life. 
Yeah, yeah. I, I uh, you know, you know, Dave mentioned how nobody wants to admit they're a slave. I think uh, certain states would say um, that it's it's hyperbole to say that we're a slave because that does an injustice to chain slavery. That's and the feels actual, the actual slave, right? <laughs> That's and, feels. And, and for those people, you know, I, I would say like, what is the definition of a slave? You know, it, it's basically. Um, involuntary servitude, right? So whatever percentage of taxation that you're forced to pay against your will is involuntary servitude. You're working for free for a certain amount of the year, and does it really matter the percentage? <laughs> right? You can be 100% uh, chain slave, um, and I guess to a certain extent that's an, that's an improvement, but not necessarily because, uh, you know, when they, quote, freed the slaves, they made everyone a slave, <laughs> right? Yeah. So well, they didn't for a little while in this country, but you know, if you have to pay taxes, you're a slave, for sure. Right, right. Like, I know that, like, I know that people are like, oh, b -b 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 my feels, but like, if you look up the definition of a slave, and then you look up the definition of taxation, and then you try to voluntarily not cooperate with that taxation, you'll realize really quick that what you are. Yeah. yeah. Well, I, I mean. I, I just recently made that same argument when I, the last video I put out when I when I was talking about the the my operation uh, Tubman Redux, um, the whole idea that that people get uh, you know they get offended or they get they get it, it hurts them when you say the word slavery you know and, and mm -hmm. exactly as you said, but you know and I used the example um, which I, I picked up from Ben Stone Ben Stone I believe uh, the uh, the fact that most people have no problem recognizing the Jews in Egypt all those many, many, many years ago as slaves. And they were tax slaves. Most people don't realize that. That's all they were. They weren't chattel slaves. They were tax slaves. Mm -hmm. And most people have no problem recognizing them as such. So why is it different for us? It's, it's just a perception thing. It's not a, it's because, it, it, because you're right. It's, you know, that's the question. If it's, if, if a hundred percent is what is not. It's easy to recognize tyranny when it's over there. Well, yeah, but it, <laughs> right. but it, yeah, but again, but again, it, that's just that's a historical story to everybody. Nobody was around back then. They hear it. Oh, yeah, they were slaves. It's okay to accept them as slaves, but they don't want right. to think about because most people, again, you you tell them that they're a slave and they look around and they go, well, I can get walk, get up and go out my front door and go here and go there and that that makes right. me free. Right, right. You know, well, are you free to do these other things? Well, no, but I'm still free. You know, so it's the same thing. There's just like you're either a slave or you aren't. It's just a matter of degree. You're either free or you aren't. You can't, you know, there's no like. Half, Why can't half. I 3D print a bazooka? That's all I want to know. <laughs> And also, it's, it's the, the NIMBY that you always say, not in my backyard, right? So if they say I'm free because I can walk out of my yard, yeah, but maybe not in Afghanistan or Yemen or Pakistan or, you know, or Syria where where people are getting, you know, murdered on a, on a, on a systematic basis by, by those, you know, the rulers in power here, right? So when we are living inside the empire, things seem pretty good. Like when you people living inside the Roman Empire, seem, seem sure. people, uh, things seem pretty good, but not necessarily for the barbarians are being murdered <laughs> and pillaged, right? And the well, citizens who are being kicked off their land to let government farm their land. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Hey, you're out of here. We took this over. Go, go move to the big city. Uh, we, we own your farm now. Right. Yeah. yeah. Well, again, but that's why they, you know, that's why they use the propaganda that we were talking about earlier to keep that, you know, because that's all it is. You just, people are, people are, have their eyes directed to the propaganda that says, well, these places are bad and we're doing better so we must be good and that's all they focus on because just like you said well you, you know you, you know you you, you, know, you said about you know they look well th those people and these rulers and well yeah that's what they'll say <laughs> oh it's because they have bad rulers our rulers are better <laughs> yeah, right yeah our you know, ruling class so, is superior to their ruling class it's like my dad can beat up your dad we are the freest <laughs> country in the we are the freest country in the whole world first of all that's a lie second of all <laughs> even if it was still the truth um, you know, the shiniest turd in the bowl is still a turd. Um, you can't, you know, it doesn't matter how, 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 how pretty you try to make it. It's still, it's still a piece of crap. So, yeah. When you go to the zoo and the lion's got like the frilly, nice, like beautiful shined up cage and all the other ones got like a shitty looking cage. They're all still in cages. <laughs> yeah. Right. Or when people say, you know, the dollar is strong and the dollar is the number one currency. 
And you're like, yeah, it's like the dirtiest, clo- dirtiest, you know, piece of clothing in the in the hamper. But, <laughs> or, or it's like, it, I, I like the way Stefan Molyneux puts it. It's like the dollar's doing good, but in comparison to what? It's like, it's like we're all falling from, you know, from a plane. And sure, some people are falling quicker than others. But you know, in the end, <laughs> we're gonna hit the ground. <laughs> it's not gonna yeah. be a positive conclusion. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. Well, um, so so you guys want to say any any last words on the uh, the wonderful nationalism of the Super Bowl or? Uh, I you know, congratulations to Peyton Manning for winning that bread and circuses of 2015. <laughs> yeah. Well, hey, hey, from the sporting aspect, if those guys can, if people are willing to pay those guys that much money to play play a game. Go for it. I'm all for that, you know. And I, like I said, I'm not. I'm not against sports per se. I just, I, I, my problem is with the, just like Dave kept saying, with the whole, the way they've transformed it and the way they use it, and so many people just, they, they don't even realize it, and you know, e- even as something like, like I was mentioning about the, the Cam Newton thing before, even as something that can be perceived as somebody not paying proper homage to the whole spectacle. Um, and I'm not talking about the Super Bowl, the spectacle of the state. <laughs> like, even, like, even if, you know, like I said, there was a lot of people that said, no, no, you, like, you can actually see him saying the words. Like, he just didn't happen to have. But, like, so many people got outraged. Like, you just see how. Stockholm part, Syndrome. Yeah, how, how much that indoctrination and is. And collectivism. In. It's so, like, that's what you're focused on. Like, We need to come up with, with a word that, that combines collectivism and Stockholm Syndrome all in one. I think it's statism. Statism. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's I think it's statism. Sure. I think it's statism. So, I, you know, I don't know, man. The Brighton Circuses is, is it's whatever, but we'll see what happens when the dollar goes bye bye. Yeah, yeah. And one thing I realized is, um, you know, so basically, um, most professional, uh, you know, really big time uh, sports associations are basically crony capitalistic organizations right or or corporate fascist fascistic corporations in the same way in the same way that you know the big banks and and you know bio, big biotech and things like that and so when we say that that you know we don't want we are against that it's not that we're against sports or when i say when we say we're against you know bank of america or chase or capital we're not against banks or when we say we're against monsanto you know we're not we're, we're not against those you know entities but we're against them being state funded Right, and their corporate shields, and and that kind of stuff. It was basic, basic uh, false dilemma there. Yeah, it's like I'm for the free market. If it's not free market, I'm not for it. Sorry. Well, yeah, but that's the. I mean, where, where Danilo is going with that, that's the that's the Bastiat quote about right. You know, this, yeah. in, in the eyes of the socialist, you know, when yeah. you when we say we don't want something done by the state, it necessarily, in their eyes, it necessarily means we don't want it done at all. And uh, that's just that's. I mean, besides being fully, it's just. It's so silly to, that people even think that's a rational response that they can just spit out right away. Well, you don't. You hate the poor. You hate whatever. It's, mm-hmm. Really, really. <laughs> but again, why do they do that? Why do people? Why do people respond to that, especially so quickly? Because that's how they've been programmed to think. Because they right? believe feels Trump fact or feels are morally superior to fact. I don't even. I don't know. See, I don't even think. I don't think they think that. I don't think that enters their thought process. Because that would that would indicate a level of critical thinking that would cause them. Yeah, to, you're right. I I, it's, I think it's just programming. Whatever it is, left, right, whatever the issue is, whatever the position is, it's just a programming that goes on. It's the you know the the confirmation bias. Whoever your particular news source is, your or your news sources, um, the the media that you the medium that you get your information from. Like no matter what it is, there's the bias everywhere, and uh, most people just ride the line of their bias no matter what goes on so they continue to you know so yeah the way the way mark stevens puts it is um you know i always try to expose the gun in the room and i think that's what a lot of volunteers uh, attempt to do and, and what makes most um status uncomfortable when you do point out the force and coercion that's uh unsaid <laughs> that's mm-hmm. implied right um you know in taxation in uh, in law and law enforcement all that kind of stuff so it's important to point out so uh, awesome conversation. Thank you very much, gentlemen. Uh, thank you for listening, everyone. If you want to support us, please do so uh, through uh, through Bitcoin, through Patreon, uh, patreon.com slash Seeds of Liberty to help us out. We love uh, doing these shows, and we're going to keep doing it, but monetary support is always helpful. Um, uh, the only democracy I support is through uh, voting with your dollar, right? If you want to see something more in the world, you 
you patronize it, yeah? value for value, right? So if you find value in our content, please donate, please help us out. So uh, thanks a lot, gentlemen. Um, this is the Seeds of Liberty podcast. Wishing everyone have a wonderful day. Take care. Bye. Peace. Peace.